The state of the environment profoundly affects our health. There is growing evidence that a degraded environment makes us sick and also that a healthy environment heals us. Climate change is the main environmental challenge facing humanity at this time. It generates tens of millions of deaths from direct and indirect causes, including the impact of extreme events, the spread of infectious diseases, human migrations and crises in water availability and food production. The American Medical Association declared in 2022 that we are in a public health crisis due to the ecological threat that directly undermines the levels of health and well-being that our societies have achieved over the last century. Britt Ray, chair in the Climate Mental Health in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the Stanford Medical School, has shown that the consequences of climate change on mental health are as varied as they are profound. Not only do extreme weather events have a direct influence, but the information received awakens a whole range of emotions that cause discomfort, suffering, and even anxiety and stress disorders. The Global South has hardly driven global warming, but, but is suffering terribly from the impacts of climate change. No one escapes climate change. While the improved infrastructure and technologies available in the Global North cushion some of the impacts of climate change on people's health and mental and physical health, both are profoundly affected, particularly mental health in the Global North. From eco-anxiety to solastalgia, from stress to anxiety, and from depression to suicide, the statistics are chilling, revealing a rapid growth of mental disorders resulting from climate change, especially in the youngest. A macro study by Susan Clayton and collaborators, published in Sustainability 2023, found that it is women, youth, and the populations of the poorest countries who have higher levels of ecological anxiety. This work analyzes that the root of these differences lies in the discrimination that underlies the patriarchal and capitalist system. The analysis of eco-anxiety cannot be separated from social conditions, cultural factors and prevailing ideologies and worldviews, since risks in the face of threats do not depend only on scientific information received, but also on learned emotional dynamics, which play a transcendental role. Eco-anxiety is a response to a world whose hegemonic mandates are not liked, cannot be complied with, and also produce internal conflicts that are difficult to resolve. The inclusion of emotions in the public discourse of environmental activists, scientific personnel, and governmental institutions is subversive because it radically transforms society, breaking down the schemes that perpetuate inequalities among those who are supposed to have the monopoly of superior reason, free of feelings or scruples. Uncoupling emotions from the rule of feminine sensibility and universalizing them to use them as a valid criteria in decision-making will undoubtedly open the way to world in which the common good is considered a good in itself. The climate crisis and its cascade of effects on people's lives and on the functioning of society offers a unique opportunity to completely rethink the model of civilization we want to be part of, starting with health, continuing with emotions and ending with human values.